believe that as artists, one of our most important responsibilities is not just to change the world, but to inspire the world. Hello, my name is Dargai. I write, direct, produce, and I'm in a constant search for inspiration. Along with Dell Futurist and Intel, we've created this masterclass on how to tell a story, how to stay inspired, how to capture the journey from script to screen. So let's start. And black screen. Where do we start? Well, we start with a story, with your story. But how to find it? I call it the transformation from a story to the story. Everyone can write, everyone can make a film as long as you see the world, notice tiny details that others may not notice and make it a part of your unique narrative, your unique voice. When I come up with a new idea, I always try to take a deep dive into anything that can inspire me articles, visuals, facts, anything that's related to the subject. As a writer, it's very important to surround yourself with things, objects, people that inspire you, that you are familiar with. For example, my laptop, Dell XPS, never gives up on me and I never give up on the laptop or my script or my coffee. My coffee, my laptop, my research, it's a part of my daily routine. This is how I start my morning. But how did we inspire? Three key moments to get inspired for me is always empathy. Seeing people, objects around you and creating a story, background story around them. At a party, at your parents' house, at, um, at your lecture. Make a note about things that sound interesting, weird dialogues, interesting words that people are using, something that seemed different how people wear something, how they look today, or I don't know, something funny, something touching, anything that catches your eye. Make a note of it. Of course, books. To create a story, you need to know the stories. Without reading, it's impossible to become a filmmaker with a deep understanding of human emotions, as each book is a window into other people's lives, experience, and memories. And of course, boredom. Allow yourself to be bored. Hide your phone for three days as a challenge and just see how your brain starts functioning. See the details that you start noticing, stories that will just burst into you. Because when you're bored, your brain starts looking for the things to be inspired. Great, amazing, you got inspired. Now what? Now we sit and write. Let's see the process. Let's say a musician comes to me with his new song. I usually sit in my room, I listen to the song 20, 30 times, and I'm trying to imagine what kind of visuals comes to my head while listening to the song. Let's say I see this really tall boy and a really short girl. Maybe they want to date each other. Interesting, okay, there's some conflict. But what's next? Structure. Each story has to have a three-act structure. Beginning, middle, and end. Uh, it sounds simple, right? But this is where most of the writers suffer a lot. So first act, beginning. This is where we introduce the world of the characters, the rules of the world. Where is it set? Why do we set it there? What's so unique about that world? Family, a city. At the end of this act is happening our inciting incident. Let's say the tall boy meets a really short girl. This is our inciting incident. That inciting incident changes now his goals and in a way his life. Now we have second act. It's our middle part. Our character is trying to deal with the consequences of that inciting incident that just happened, remember? And with all the hurdles that come to prevent our character from achieving his main goal. In our case, the boy really wants to be with the girl, but there are obstacles to be together. In our case, it's their height. Now third act. After the series of successful and not so successful tries, our character finally achieves his goal. Or doesn't, but maybe then he realizes something about himself or about the world. They end up together by accepting and helping each other, in our case, right? So in a way for your act to be clear, the most important thing for us to realize and to know the wants and needs of our characters. 
What's the difference? So the want is something that our character wants to achieve the most in their life. It's that desire. It's what's written on their dream board. For example, going to Canada or dating that heartthrob or escaping the boarding school or falling in love. A need is something that they don't know they really need the most, but it's actually something that will make them truly happy. For example, to accept themselves, to finally face their strict father, to voice their opinion, usually wants and needs in a week, in contradiction with each other. Sometimes you want to get around the house or the location to finish up your script. I ride in cabs and trains, just walking around the streets sometimes, just sitting on the pavement and writing. So I usually take my Dell's laptop with fast charging so I don't have to stick around switchboards. Great, so what do we do next? We need to test it. Read it aloud. Sit with your laptop and read it aloud. Is it funny? Is it interesting? Read it to your friends, to your family. If your dialogues are not funny for you, they won't be funny for anyone. So test it, change it, then test it again, then change it until you love it, and until you love it. And then, of course, you can bring it finally to the screen. So what kind of stories people like to watch nowadays? People always love seeing stories that they can relate to, which are emotional, interesting, unusual, unique, and told through a unique voice of the filmmaker. I think so. And you're finally on the set. It's scary and exciting at the same time. What to do next? Uh, where to put your camera? Whom to call? It is very scary. But if you've done your homework, there is nothing to be scared of. Okay, so our script is locked. And we can concentrate finally on our pre-production storyboards. Helps your cinematographer to visualize what you had in your hand. Shot breakdown, a document with a number of shots, angles, magnifications that helps you and your chief AD to plan the shoot. Filmmaking is a collaborative art form. You need several departments, hundreds of people to make a film, or sometimes just five people who know what they're doing. For example, sound department. If you don't have a fancy big mic like this, you can just always record on your phone or on any simple mic that you have. The idea is to capture not just the dialogues, but also environment. Cinematography department, it's not just technical, where they have to know which lens to use, where to put lights. Does it cut my light or not? Does it enhance something or not? Does it emotionally playing into my emotional narrative or not? It's a very creative field. The production design department decides which colors to use, which props to use, how to build that big house that you had in your mind while writing it into reality. Costume department. Am I using a soft material or rough material? Am I using silk or cotton? All this subconsciously will influence my audience in the way how they see the character, how they read the situation. Once the shoot is over, be ready for your first disappointment, seeing the edit. It's the rule, and it's okay. More time you'll be spending on your edit, the stronger your vision will become. Every department, in a way, is the reflection of your vision, of your mind. Editing, how you see the world. Maybe it's through jump cuts, through slower edit, montage sequences. Find that language. Sound design. What sounds remind you of your character? What sounds can create the emotion that you want your audience to feel? Maybe music? Maybe someone's footsteps? Maybe there is a sound of birds? Color correction. In which colors do you see the world? Saturated, soft, maybe black and white? Filmmaking is a collaborative art form, but it also represents and creates the new worlds that you as an artist are willing to give birth to. The laptops are packed with Intel 12th gen processor for such heavy lifting, because for editing, we really need the power. With such speed of system usage, we can do everything smoothly. So go out now and tell your story. Write, shoot, make a film. Right now, there is no excuses not to create. Just create, because you're a creator. 
One thing I love about being a collaborator is listening to different stories about people. I love seeing how their unique experiences and perspectives help share the pieces they create. And that's why we're bringing a challenge for you. Show us how you do what you do and the way you do it. Submit a short form under five minutes, stylized video of what your creative process looks like and how technology empowers that experience. Let's say, do you work through creative ruts through online mood boards? Or do you dump all your thoughts onto one page and then sort them out after some time? Whatever this process looks like for you, let us know through your video submission. It should be an authentic glimpse into your mind. Winners of this challenge will get a one-on-one -on -one mentorship session with me and a brand new XPS laptop.